So today we're talking about how do you rig up Masumi slides uh, to use them as a set of linear slides in a robotics project. So you can take these Masumi slides, run them off one motor, and have them running up and down nice and cleanly. You're going to need a couple things for this project. Uh, you'll need a custom 3D printed file that uh, I've remixed. You can find that down in the description below. I've got my first stage attached to a Go build a channel. You could attach anything you want because this is my motor I'm going to drive. Motor placement doesn't really matter on this system. You could put the motor up high, you could put the motor down below, but I've just added in here. Uh, the design here has a four millimeter pattern so that it fits in with Go build a parts. Uh, and then on the inside here, I just have an M4 bolt covered in a couple different um, V groove bearings. And then that M4 bolts is what is actually attaching it to my system here. These attach the Sumi slide using your eight millimeter countersunk screws. And on the other side of the adapter is a M3 lock nut that just slides right in and it holds itself in place because the bottom of this design has a hex head that fits right in perfectly. So my stage is going to be running up this way and I'm going to be making a multi-stage system today. So I like to lay out my system to make sure that when I lay them out next to each other, they're both going to actually extend out. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is, because I'm going to have to put another stage in between here, um, I'm going to have to use a sleeve nut. The problem with these sleeve nuts is that the sleeve nut is not going to fit through the hole on our standard Misumi slide because they only have a three millimeter hole, but this sleeve nut's actually got an internal diameter of four and a half. So we're actually going to drill out the ends, the two ends of my slide here to make sure they go in. So let's head on over to my vise. And we're going to extend this out, give it a nice little clamp, making sure that we're going to get straight through on this hole here. Let's change that. So make sure that when you drill through, you're actually going to clear through and you're not going to actually lose half of your piece there. So let's actually drill through with a four and a half millimeter hole. I'm going to back the camera up a bit here so you can see. Should be nice and easy. We'll do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Clear out any aluminum chips. Now we've got our holes ready to rock. And that four and a half millimeter bit is just enough so that when you have your hole there, you can still get your countersunk screw in that top end. So, and we're gonna mount these two together. Uh, in order to mount the two together, you'll notice that there's a hole in that center stage. That allows you to get your uh, screw through. So I'm gonna grab my bottom section, the one that says BOT, and I'm gonna clip it on to the bottom stage here so that it lines up with my other unit. So how I get these on is I line up this back corner and then it kind of snaps in. So you're gonna have to push against this side, roll it up and around, and it clips it in. I'm going to then mount my other hole that now has the larger sides on it through like so. And then I'm going to put through my sleeve nut. Let's be able to put that one in. So I'm going to push my sleeve nut through, and that sleeve nut is perfectly sized so that it fits inside that plastic 3D printed adapter. I'm going to flip it around, and then we're going to put through our M3 screw on this side. So you are going to need two. I would also suggest that you Loctite this screw in. Because if you don't Loctite this screw, what's going to happen is, and now that I'm at the end, I need another two millimeter Allen key to hold the other side. If you don't Loctite this, what's going to happen is it might loosen up a bit. And I'll show you here. Let's see if we can get this camera angle. If you can see right down in here, and that's going to be kind of tough, um, what's going to happen is that screw is going to kind of back out and then it's gonna actually end up getting caught in here. So by using that threaded insert, we have a nice flush fitting, so it's not gonna get caught in that extra setting there. 
We'll do the same thing on the other side. This time I'm going to use a top system and I'm gonna get rid of my little M3 lock nut in there because that's gonna cause me some troubles. Again, I'm going to hold it on one side, push it up and around and it kind of gets a nice little click snap in. And I'm gonna put my lock or my threaded bolt on this side because this is the side that I drilled out. Is it the side that I drilled out? No, the other one is the side that I drilled out. This is the side that I drilled out. It gets a little squirrely when you start working around this stuff. There we go. So I've got that side drilled out. The other one, I've got my M3 screw. And let's go ahead and tighten that up. Again, I recommend you Loctite these. I'm not Loctiting this one because I'm gonna take it off later, but I highly suggest you add some Loctite to these screws. You don't have to add Loctite to the, to the lock nut side um, ones, but these ones you definitely do. Okay, so now I've got a nice dual stage up ready to rock. Now I need to do the final stage of my system. So the final stage, the bottom section here has to have a spring and this is going to be on the bottom section of your slide. Again fold it up and that spring just goes through the hole that's on this side in all of these units so I can actually take a spring and I can just pull that side out and it hooks nicely around over the top to be able to get in there and then compress your spring back on. And then I'm going to grab a top system. And on my top system, I only have one V-groove bearing. I don't need two. Again, I'm going to run it over. On these ones, I just have the lock nut for these because of the last two stages in my system. I'm going to grab two more 8 millimeter bolts. I don't want to use 10 millimeter because 10 millimeter is going to expand past. And we will screw this one in. Nice thing is you don't need another two millimeter screw on this side. So if you were to use a 10 millimeter screw, you're actually going to come up above that flush point. So now I've got my double stage system prepared and ready for actually rigging. Both my systems are going to one side and they will expand out, ready to rock. Um, I use that sleeve nut system in the middle. The bottom of the last stage should have spring and the top of the last stage should only have one pulley, not two. All right, so let's grab some string out and let's actually get ready to string this system up. I like to string my linear slides with uh, Kevlar rope. Uh, Kevlar's rope is nice and strong. It's pretty resistant to fraying. It's quite resistant to heat um, and it doesn't stretch most importantly. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using this pretty thick nylon string. Uh, most because it's what I have access to. It's nice and thick. It's easier to work with. I also have two different colors for this demonstration. Um, but if you're going to use this in a, in a competition sphere, you want to use the thinnest uh, rope you can. I find that half millimeter or 0.75 uh, millimeter works great. Uh, I'm going to burn the end of my nylon rope here because you can see that my end is all frayed. So what I can do is I can just run a little bit of heat on it with a lighter. And then just to melt the ends, grab my fingers and quickly run across it and that will give me a nice easy end for me to throw in without having to worry about fraying. Let's start with uh, doing our extension string. Our extension string in this tutorial is going to be gray. So the first thing I do is I'm going to choose one side of the pulley that I'm going to work on and if you look on the pulley here, the Go Builder pulley has two sides on it and then I also have two individual pulleys here. You want to make sure they line up to their respective pulleys. So if I look on the last end of the system here, this is where we're going to eventually tie it to. It's going to be the far pulley. So I'm going to make sure that my extension string is going to be tied to the far side of my pulley. So I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot in here first. And I'm going to come up from the top, go through my system, come back up through my little hole here. Find that a set of pliers can really help you with grabbing your string. Sometimes you can also use a set of pliers to push the string up. Get you a little bit more 
success there. Okay, great. Managed to get that one through. So now to finish this off, I'm gonna tie a double Davy knot to get this one in. You can choose uh, any knot that you like. I personally like the double Davy knot because I'm using a braided cable here and a single Davy knot tends to come undone. But a double Davy makes this nice and tight. Grab a set of pliers to be able to really give that a good wrench. Oh, get it on there nice and tight. Now, at this point, you can cut off any excess. I'm gonna leave the excess on personally, just for uh, this tutorial. Now it's time to figure out how much string we're actually going to need. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna make two loops around my point. I'm actually gonna do one just because this string is so thick. Then I'm just gonna hold my fingers here and I'm gonna say, okay, if I were to go through my whole system, let's get a good amount of slack going on here. I'm just going to pin it with my fingers just to get myself enough slack for my string here. So we'll do two, go back to the next system, back to the next system, back to the next system, back to the end. And then I'm also gonna give myself a little extra savings in the end because I don't wanna to have to rig this whole thing again. We will burn off our end here, make this easier to get through our big root bearings. Cool, so now we've got enough string for our whole system. It's time to start actually working it through. Make sure I still got my one loop. Now I'm gonna feed it through the top half of my bearing on this side. I'm gonna twist the bearing, and as I spin the bearing, it allows me to get my point through. Go ahead and draw my whole string through. You don't wanna pull too tight at this point, you're gonna unwrap your last point. Let's go through my top end here. We'll go through the top on the bottom here as well. Oh, don't go all the way through. Back up the top on this system here. Oh, don't want to go all the way through. Back through the top on this system. We're actually gonna go over top of the spring here. And then I'll come back up through my top here. And I'm just gonna tie off a simple bowline to finish this off. That's looking good. At this point, you could go ahead and cut off some of your excess as well. And this should be a pretty good system. So if we were to spin this all the way up, and if we were to keep rotating this string and actually fill up the motor, you're gonna notice that it's gonna extend our whole system. And at this point, we actually do wanna extend the whole system to max. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep twisting this and get my tools out of the way. And I'm gonna keep rotating this until I get to my max tension. I'm really gonna crank on this thing because I want to get to full extension on my string here. Now I'm gonna have to move my camera as I go here because now it's time to start doing the retraction string. Now, because our extension string loops up around this way, we actually need our retraction string to loop up the opposite direction. Uh, we need to go up the opposite direction because if it doesn't go the opposite direction, obviously you'll be trying to retract and extend at the same time. So I'm really gonna give this a really good crank just so we know we're at the right uh, extension point. Uh, so let's grab our retraction string here. Now, now I think about this, you actually might wanna tie your two knots on here before you put it in because that is going to be one heck of a nightmare to get out. So let's actually unscrew that for now. Again, tie yourself a double Davy knot. Crank this all the way up, so I'm at Mac extension. So I'm gonna start on this side, go back to this side, come all the way up and over to the top here, 
back down to the bottom, come all the way up to the top on the next end of the system, and then come back down. And again, I'm gonna give myself a little extra slack because I don't wanna to have to recut any of this string. Now we've got our string ready to rock. Let's start with winding it up. I'm gonna make sure I twist this thing by hand to get it all the way up to my max extension point. One full loop around. Okay, now let's do another sanity check. So if I were to twist this, I should be letting string out on the retraction side and bring it in. So if I were to twist in, I should be pulling the retraction string in while I'm letting string out on the extension side, which is what I want. So now I know that I'm actually going the correct direction. So come around and make sure I don't get caught up on my string here. I'm gonna come up over top of my pulley here. We're gonna come all the way, all the way over to the top of this pulley here. I like to use my pliers to be able to grab my string. Makes life a lot easier. And then back up through the top of this side, making sure that I'm not getting my string all tangled. There we go. We're gonna come up again, come all the way to the top of my system. And uh, this is where we're gonna terminate. Now at this point, it's really gotta make sure that you've twisted this thing all the way up. The problem with using the SAR 330s sometimes is that you can actually extend past full extension, but you're never actually gonna be able to rotate to get these things above. They're only gonna be able to pull to 90. So if you get this thing above here, your tension's gonna be off in the system. So I'm gonna rotate really hard to the right, make sure that it is fully set. And once I'm at max extension here, what I'm looking for is I want to tie a bowline again in this to be able to put on that spring, but I want the end of that spring to be about four to five centimeters away from my spring. And I find if I'm about four to five centimeters away from this spring, I have good system tension. So I'm gonna to try to, to tie my bowline here with the goal of ending my loop about four to five centimeters away. Uh, this usually takes me a couple tries, to be honest. Um, so don't feel bad if you're working through this and you're like, oh man, I have to tie it again and again and again, um, because that's, that's pretty common, so don't worry. You can also kind of fudge your bowline around a bit too, which is why I kind of like the bowline in this respect. So what I'm doing here is I'm just tying, holding my knot back, holding the point where I want it to finish with my fingers, and just kind of working my bowline knot back a bit. There we go. So you can get, I'm gonna come back to my motor, make sure I crank it up. And when I were, if I were to pull this together, you see I'm about four centimeters away. So that's actually probably gonna be pretty okay tension. So at this point, I'm gonna grab my spring with one side and grab my string with another. And I'm gonna pull until I can get some good tension on my system, like so. And it should sound like a guitar string. And I might want a little bit more tension on this system. So I think I'm gonna tie that one more time. That's a little bit better. That's more I'm looking for. I'm looking for some guitar strings tension. You'll know you've done it correctly at this point if you can grab your system with your hands pull it and you can rotate the whole thing with your hands as you go. And there we go. So that's your linear slide all rigged up. Now I can push my system and it'll extend and pull it back in and it draws it back in. Uh, I hope you found that really useful and uh, best of luck with your robotics project.